The Apple Mac Pro line in 2019 got a big refresh with up to 8 cores, i9 on Mac mini, iMac and MacBook Pro 16 inch line and up to 28 cores on the freshly announced Mac Pro. But a i7 quad core is enough for content creators and prosumers in 2020 and how is the upgrade process on an iMac? <laughs> So what's up guys, Fabio here and welcome to Shades of Tech. This is episode number 3 of upgrading my iMac to the MaxDAO configuration series and I'll leave the link to all the other videos up here. So this is the 2013 27-inch iMac equipped with an i5 processor quad-core so I'm going to upgrade it with the top model i7 quad-core 4771 of course from Intel with turbo boost up to 3.9 GHz and it might not seem a big improvement in terms of course but the base speed is like the turbo boost of the one I have now and it can take advantage of the multi-thread operation with the 8 threads versus the 4. So we'll see how it works, some benchmark and I'll tell you if this operation is worth the risk of opening the iMac. Because to get to the CPU it's the most difficult part of upgrading an iMac. I found myself comfortable doing this upgrade even if it was my first time but you need of course to open the screen and so you have to gently cut the screen glue with the pizza tool and after 10-15 minutes you are able to open it and disconnect it from the motherboard. Then we remove the left speaker and disconnect it, its cable so the hard disk now is exposed and you can remove it as well. In the previous video we explained how to upgrade the normal mechanical hard drive with an SSD so definitely check it out. And now of course the power supply must be disconnected and removed and be very careful not to touch an exposed part and to make discharge the iMac following the opposite steps and procedure. Then you need to remove the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas and a pro tip is to use some tape to keep them in the correct order and then last but not the least the right speaker as well so finally we are able to remove the motherboard but on the back here the blade ssd that we recently installed there is a heat sink and it's the last thing to remove and you must pay attention because the cpu often remains glued to it out with the old and in with the new but before you need to clean all the copper and the heat exchanger parts with a microfiber cloth and opposite products like the arctic silver then reapply the thermal paste. I use thermal grids because it has better conductivity but it's more expensive. So be sure to use a lot of it because those Haswell top tier CPU get to turbo boost immediately so you want a very good heat exchange. Then carefully put everything back together and turn power on. After a few scary moments the Apple logo appeared and we were safe and sound. So far so good. It's time to make some testing, shall we? The Jigbag test with the new hardware scored a 20% more in the single core score and even a 30% plus in the multi core score. So, definitely improving from the base model 4760 is a solid performance boost. And in Cinebench, which is a CPU intensive test, we got even a 34% improvement. And this is definitely the most powerful CPU I have ever used. But how this score translate in real life benefits? Well, the main activity I use my iMac for is video editing and this upgrade was night and day in change for me. Using Final Cut Pro 10, the rendering times are totally cut by 20 to 30% and as soon as the background render starts, you feel the powerful multi-thread CPU boosting immediately to Turbo Boost. So you will expect a 30% improvement in exporting times. Well, you will be wrong because we cut from almost 4 minutes to 1 minute almost 70% reduction in the Bruce X test. But in real life exporting a 5 minute 4K clip Apple Pro Res HQ we cut a whole minute. And truth be told this improvement is also partially due to the bigger RAM and also the Catalina update that takes advantage of the GPU. But the overall result is mind-blowing considering that this 2013 iMac 
is futureproof enough to edit 4K video in 2020 with a lot of LUT effects, butter smooth editing. So you can apply this process also to all the iMac until 2019 line. Of course you will remove your warranty but you just need to find out the right CPU, the max CPU that your iMac can handle according to its model and of course the newer the iMac and the most powerful CPU you can use but also the cost will increase. So that's it, thanks so much for watching me so far, be sure to like or dislike this video, comment and subscribe for the next episode of the series with the RAM upgrade. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech, ciao!